Okay, so this is the entire topic. And this is actually the entire topic for this booklet and the next booklet. Complete, this is the only thing you can do, okay? And this is probably going to answer some of the questions that you can do on that very front page of your booklet. There are only two things you can do in this topic. We are going to be looking at rigid bodies that are in equilibrium. Now, if they are in equilibrium, then the resultant force in any direction is zero. In other words, force is up, equal force is down. So all you can do is resolve the forces. That's one of the two things that you can do. You know, on those questions I gave you on the front page, one of the two things you can do is resolve the forces. Forces up must be equal to forces down. Otherwise, it's not in equilibrium. But the thing that's new here is that the resultant moment about any point is zero. In other words, the clockwise moments are equal to the clockwise, uh, the anti-clockwise moments. And I've said that you will typically use both of these properties to solve exam questions. You don't always need to use both, but you can always access both of these. Now, I've circled this word any, and I'm going to put a star here, and I'm going to put another star here, because it's so important. You can take moments about any point. What you have just done on this previous exercise is you have been taking moments about this point, about this point about this point, because they weren't in equilibrium. If it is in equilibrium, you could take moments here, 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 here. Anywhere you took moments from, imagining that the pivot was at any of these red crosses here, if you pretend the pivot is at any of those points, if it is in equilibrium, the anti-clockwise will always be equal to the clockwise. I cannot stress this point enough. You can take the moment about any point if it's in equilibrium, and it will always be clockwise equals anti-clockwise. And you can decide where to put that moment, to put, sorry, where to put that point in order to make your question as easy as possible to solve. So there are two things you can do. You can resolve forces up and down, or you can take moments. That's the topic. Done. Obviously, you're not ready yet, so I'll teach you a bit more. OK, so. Rigid bodies in equilibrium. Here we go. Now we're starting to get to like actually what a mechanics question might look like here. And it says a uniform rod AB of length 3 metres and weight 20 newtons rests horizontally on supports at A and C where AC equals 2 metres C diagram. Calculate the magnitude of the reaction at each of the supports. OK, so I've written three things down in the corner of the page in red here. I've written weights and reactions, moments, and resolving vertically. Now, before I actually get to this bit, sorry, I've realized I've underlined the word uniform. What does uniform actually mean about, yeah? Good, the mass is spread evenly. So where does the weight act on the body if it's uniform? In the middle. In the middle, in the center, okay? So that's one of the things that we know about if it's a uniform body. Uh, this ruler that I've got here, this meter ruler, is a uniform body because it's all made out of wood. I mean, it's probably uniform. It might be slightly denser at one end. If it was a non-uniform body, I don't know, maybe you like have, maybe I've sort of stuffed on one end like loads of blue tack or something, so it's no longer uniform. One end has got like heavier than the other end, and things are going to change about that. We'll just look at that as a separate set of exam questions later on. So we now know what it means by uniform. The mass is spread evenly and the weight acts at the centre. Now we can come down to these bullet points that I mentioned and I didn't actually address. So we want to add on to our diagram the weights and the reactions. Well, they've told us that the whole thing is three metres, so the weight of it is going to act at the very middle and it has got a weight of 20 newtons, not 20 G, because it's already told us before, so it's 20. And the distance from there to there is 1.5. OK? What is the distance from here to C, then? 0 0.5. Because the whole thing from A to C is 2 metres. And then the distance from B to C must be 1 metre. Now, you're going to develop your own way of how you like to do this. Sometimes I find arrows can be helpful, and sometimes I find they can be confusing. Sometimes I find I don't like to put the centre of mass because I just know it's the centre of mass, so I know I can half the distance. It, sometimes your diagram gets busy. 
you need to decide what numbers will help you on your diagram and the way that you think. So all I've done here is I've done the weights part, but I need to think about the reactions. Now, you're going to have to now imagine that you are a ruler. Okay, I've got you to imagine that you are a particle on a slope hanging from a piece of string out the top of your head. Now I want you to imagine that you are a beam lying down and you are resting. Your head is here. Probably the top of your leg is here. I want you to tell me what it feels like to be a beam lying on two supports. <laughs> Pardon? On very pointy supports. What does it feel like? Painful. Painful. What do you feel on underneath your head then? What does it feel like? A jabbing pain. A jabbing pain. Jabbing which direction? Upwards. Upwards. Okay, so there is a jabbing pain here, upwards, which is the normal reaction here. And I haven't quite finished this. And then you also, at the top of your leg, just underneath... Uh, at the top of your leg, <laughs> you feel another normal reaction, don't you? And that's because we're always thinking about the beam. We're always thinking about how does the beam feel? This is the thing we're considering here. And you also, when you were lying down, you also feel like your weight is pulling you downwards. And overall, your weight is acting in the middle, probably somewhere on about where your back is, OK? But does, do you think that your, this reaction here or your head is feeling more of a, a pushing up force? We don't know, OK? I mean, we could make a prediction, but they're not going to be the same as each other. So I can't call them both R. I'm going to have to call that one RA and that one RC. So the reactions are going to be different to each other unless the whole thing is symmetrical. If it's symmetrical, they're obviously going to be equal to each other because symmetry tells us they would have to be equal. Um, and we'll find out in a second which one is bigger and try and reason why that that is true. So we've done the weights and reactions. We're now going to do moments and resolving vertically. Now, if I resolved the forces up and downwards, if I resolved the forces up and downwards, I would get what? What would my equation say if I said that up equals down? RA plus RC equals 20. OK? But I can't find out what RA is because I don't know what RC is. And I can't find out what RC is because I don't know what RA is. So maybe resolving wasn't the best thing to do first here. But it's good to know that we could do that. Now we're going to take moments. Yeah, Hamza. I think moments are one of the options to cancel out. Very, very good. You have a choice of where you want to take moments from. If you wanted, you could take moments at the middle. That's what we've previously been doing. But I don't want to take moments at the middle here. I could take moments from here, but if I took moments from here, I would have RC multiplied by 1 plus RA multiplied by 3 equals 20 multiplied by 1.5. I've got another equation that's got RA and RC in it, which is fine because I could do simultaneous equations with this, but we want to make life as easy as possible. So Hamza's has just suggested that we should take moments either about here, and what happens if you take moments about here, Hamza? What RA would get cancelled out because the distance is zero. The distance of RA to that point is zero. So when you multiply that force by its perpendicular distance, you get zero and it disappears. So this is a fantastic place to take moments from because you'll be able to quickly find out what RC is. Where would you take moments from if you wanted to find out what RA was? On C, at point C. And you'd have different clockwise and anti-clockwise there. So let's actually do the first suggestion that Hamza said. I actually find right from the end, and you do this kind of language, OK? You write the letter M to say that you're taking moments, and then you put brackets, and you say where you're taking moments about. When I say take moments about, that's like us imagining that it is pivoted and screwed in at this point here, that it's not moving. It's not moving anywhere, because it's in equilibrium. So when you take moments about A, we don't say equals, because we're not going to say equals. We're going to take moments and we're going to make the anti-clockwise equal the clockwise, or the clockwise equal the anti-clockwise. So if you look at A here, we've clearly got the 20 newtons is trying to make it go in one direction, and the RC is trying to make it go in the other direction. So those two moments must be equal to each other. So when you take moments about A, you get 20 times 1.5, because it's 1.5 metres away, and it must be equal to this distance, which is RC, and this distance is 2, and the force is RC. So you get 30 equals 2RC. 
So RC is equal to 15. Now you could, if you wanted to, take moments about C, but what's going to be the quicker thing to do? Yeah, we know this. We know when you add them together that they have to equal to 20. So we know that RA must be equal to 5, so that 5 plus 15 makes 20. But what I'm going to do to you now is I'm just going to prove to you that you could have taken moments about C, and it would have worked. Now, if you take moments about C, we've got this one trying to make it go in one direction, this one trying to make it go in the other direction. So you would have 20 multiplied by 0 0.5 is equal to what? OK, but no, not what is 20 times 0 0.5? What's, what would it be equal to in the other direction? Oh, RA times 2. RA times 2. So you get 10 equals 2RA. So RA equals 5. Look, same thing. So you, as the mechanic in this mathematician problem, you, as the mathematician in this mechanics problem, you have choices of the things you can do. But you don't have a much of a choice. All you can do is resolve and take moments. Taking moments is the thing where you need to be skilled. Don't just always take moments from the first point you see. Pause and think, where's the best place to take moments in this question? Yes? What would make the best statement? So I think the best way to do this, the way I would do this, is I would resolve at A, because just resolving from one end is really easy. Often resolving somewhere in the middle can be a bit trickier for us to do. It's not that much harder. I'd resolve from one end here to get what RC was, and then I would look at the forces up equal the forces down. There are some problems where you will have to do both of them because of the missing information that you've got. OK, so I'm going to do one more example here, and then it's just practice for the last part of the lesson and then some homework. So given that the rod is in equilibrium, find the values of x and y. Now, you'll see here this rod, they've not indicated any weight for us. OK, so there's no weight that's actually happening here. But it looks like there's probably somebody sat on A or something. Maybe there's a box on A with a weight of 10 newtons, and there's a box on B with a weight of 15 newtons. <coughs> but it looks like the rod is light, as in it has no mass. So there's a few different things that you can spot. Very quickly, if we resolve up and down, and I always think this one's a useful one to start with, you can just see that x plus y is equal to 25. Um, Zuba, have you got any suggestions of where's a good place to take moments about? OK, good. Let's take moments about x. If you take moments about x, x is 0 away from it. So you won't even have to include x in that particular bit. So if I'm going to take moments about here, which two forces are the ones that are working with each other? Y and 10. Good. Y and 10 are both trying to make it go anti-clockwise. So you would have y multiplied by 2 for this one plus 10 multiplied by 1 is equal to 15 times by its distance, which is 3. So you get 2y plus 10 equals 45. So 2y is 35. So y is 17.5. OK? Yes. Now I can't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> and then you can just sub it in to find out what x is. So clearly, we get that x is equal to 25 take away 17.5. So x is equal to 7.5 newtons. But I can verify this. Where would I, ver where would I take y. moments to verify? OK, so let's take moments at y. You don't have to do this. This is extra work now. Notice how I didn't put moments about x equals, because it's not equals. I'm just stating what I'm doing. So when I take moments about y this time, which two forces are working with each other? The x and the 15. So you'll have 2x plus 15 times 1 equals uh, 10 times 3 equals 30. So if I just quickly finish off. This is just like a proof, not a proof, but like a verification. We then get 2x equals 15, so x equals 7.5. So you could have done it by taking moments about y. 
I'm just going to show you one more thing that would have worked. If you took moments about A, if you took moments about A, this one wouldn't be included. You would have 1x plus 3y is equal to 15 times by 4. So you get x plus 3y equals 60. Now, I guarantee if you solve this equation and this equation simultaneously, you will get x equals 7.5, y equals 17.5. Yeah, Mr. Kim. With, how do you know how to use... How do you know that your supposed to use 1 instead of 2 when you're doing, doing that resolving bit? In which bit? This bit here? Uh, yes, on that. Mm -hmm. you, you know, why, why did you use 1 instead of 2? Why did I use 1 instead of 2? Yeah, I don't know what you mean. Because you know 1 meter, one meter is on the left and 2 meters is on the right. Ah, are you talking about where I got these numbers from? Yeah. So it's x multiplied by 1. It's y multiplied by 3 because the distance is 3. I don't know what you're, when you're saying one and two. I don't know what you're referring to. The one and one meter. Yeah. Why is the one used and not two? Because that would be. Because one plus two is three. One plus two is three. So why is it three meters away from the distance? It's the distance from what? Uh, it's the distance from A. Yeah, because I'm taking moments about A. This is like these bits down here are just like verifications of stuff. Okay, so you've got, uh, we've got 20 minutes to do these last bits. You've just got a few questions to try here, okay? Um, they tell you what the weight is of these, um, and you need to put on the magnitudes of the reactions, and then you've got some of these, and then this question here. And I think that's probably going to be us finishing up on this bit.